If you're over the age of 70 and you sometimes struggle to get in and out of a chair, the first thing to let you know is that you're not alone. There's lots of people out there with this problem. And the second thing is we can hopefully fix it for you. So in this video, we're gonna do just that. Please stick around and I'll show you how. If you don't know who I am, my name is Will Harlow and I'm the over 50s specialist physio here at HT Physio in Farnham. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to get up and out of a chair easily and safely if you're over the age of 70. So the first thing to let you know, of course, you aren't the only person going through this problem. I see it all the time in the practice, but the thing is there's some surefire tips to make this job a lot easier for you. We need this movement every time we get out of a chair, every time we get off the toilet, every time we get out of the car. So it's vital you know how to do it properly and that's what we're gonna to do today. So before I show you what I'm gonna show you today, I just need to let you know this is not gonna be suitable for everyone. Please do get checked out by your doctor before you put it into action. And if it causes you any pain, then just ignore what I'm gonna tell you. Anyway, let's have a look at what to do to get out of a chair. Now, if you're struggling with getting in and out of a chair, don't worry because we're gonna fix it for you today. I've broken down the movement of getting in and out of a chair into six component parts. We're gonna practice each one and you're gonna practice the ones that you find tricky. Now, if you're really struggling with this movement, you feel stiff or immobile or weak, don't worry because this video should still help. There are parts of this exercise routine that you can practice no matter your ability and it, over time it is gonna help you with this movement. So I don't want you to feel that this is out of your reach. There's definitely something you'll be able to get from this video no matter your ability level. So we've got six parts to get through. The first thing we're gonna do sets us up beautifully for a nice sit to stand. And this is actually something that people get wrong all the time. So in order to get in and out of a chair, I think that the best position for us is at the edge of the chair. But what most people try and do is they often try and get out of the chair when they're back here. So they try and stand up like this when they're off balance, their center of gravity is behind where they need it to be. It should be over here in front. And when they try and stand, they can't get themselves up and out of the chair. They don't have that forward momentum because they're trying to stand up with their legs in front of them. It just doesn't work. So you actually need to bring yourself to the edge of the chair first. So that's why we're gonna practice something called the bum shuffle. And the bum shuffle looks like this. You're gonna start off from your comfortable sitting position and then without using our hands, we're just gonna practice walking our bottom towards the edge of the chair, shuffling like this. And we want to get to a point where our sitting bones are right on the edge of the chair. Then we're gonna practice walking backwards like this. Again, not using our hands if we can help it and coming back to rest. So again, we're gonna shuffle, 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 walk those sitting bones forward right to the edge of the chair like this. And then we're gonna walk ourselves back. Simple as that. Now this is actually a really nice core exercise. You can feel your core muscles working as you do this and also the muscles down in your hips and it gets us to that wonderful starting point ready for a sit to stand. So I'm gonna take, take myself right to the edge to show you the next stage. So to do the next stage, if you found that easy, we're now gonna practice the hip hinge. And the hip hinge is the second part of this movement and it allows us to generate something I call nose over toes, which is very important for sit to stand. Because if you can't get your nose over your toes, your center of gravity is too far back and you will struggle to get up and out of the chair. So the hip hinge is easy. It looks something like this. We're gonna put our hands on our hips, we're gonna keep our back nice and straight, and we're gonna bring our nose over our toes without bending the spine. So you can see here, hopefully, that my back is straight and the movement is happening lower down from my hips. So this area is straight, and the movement's happening from down here. And then we're gonna bring ourselves back. So again, we're gonna hinge forward like this, nose over toes, and then back. And again, forward, nose over toes, and then back. And what I want you to feel here as you do this is your center of gravity has come forward, your weight is coming now over your feet, which now makes you ready to get up from the chair. So we're getting into that ready position, which is the first stage of the sit to stand, or the actual initiation of the movement is we bring our momentum forward and then we stand from here. But for now, I just want you to practice coming forward, keeping that back straight, just practicing hinging at the hips. If you've got very stiff hips, you might have to practice this a fair bit before it becomes natural. And if you've got arthritic hips and you can't do this movement, 
I would allow you to just slightly round your back to allow yourself more space, but only do that if you absolutely have to. So for most people, we want our backs to stay nice and straight throughout. So once you've practiced the hip hinge, you're quite happy with that. We're gonna move on to the next step, which is the little bum bump using our hands. And a bum bump looks something like that. But we're gonna do it with our hands on the hand rest, especially if you feel that this is quite difficult for you. So you want your feet flat on the floor. We're right at the edge of the chair. We're gonna do our hip hinge first. And at the end of the movement, we're gonna use our hands to just lift the bum and then drop it down. So again, we're gonna come up like that, using the hands just to help us up and down. And we're only lifting probably two, three inches off the chair, not very much, just so there's a little bit of space between your bottom and the seat. And you're using about 10% of the strength in your arms to help you do that, okay? So hopefully what we're doing is 90% from the legs, 10% from the hands, because we want the majority of the force to be coming through our legs, because those are the muscles that are gonna help us, and it's not great to always be using your hands. So you're gonna practice coming forward, nose over toes, and bump. And you can see that we're using the momentum of the upper body, we get to here, and the momentum takes us forward, and then we're just allowing it to drop back down. Now, if you're gonna do this to practice, I want you to make it nice and slow on the way back down, and a bit quicker on the way back up. So it's not one, two, one, two, it should be one, two, three. One, two, three, like that. So going up to one, down to two, three. That would be a perfect tempo to practice. The fourth step is we're gonna do the same thing, but with no use of the hands. So for this time, I'm gonna take my hands out the way entirely. I'm gonna to walk to the edge of the seat, just like we practiced, keep the back nice and straight, and then it's forward, bump, and down. And if you're gonna do this to practice at home, I want you to practice doing a little bit of a bigger bump to get a little bit more space away from the chair, between your bottom and the chair. Now to do it at a slow tempo, we go up and then down slowly. So up one, down two, three. Again, up one, down two, three. Up one, down two, three. So it's a very small bump off the chair, but we're still making it really slow on the way back down. And this is a great way to practice generating that momentum. We're getting nose over toes, which means our body weight is coming forward. Center of gravity is now slightly in front of us, which helps us to drive forward and up. And then that's going to be the, uh, the foundations to allow you to stand. So once you've mastered that, okay, and you've practiced that for, I don't know, 30 repetitions in a row, if you feel you've got it drilled down, we're going to move on to the next step, which is a full sit to stand using the hands. So we're gonna go back down to using hands on chair like this. The back stays straight, we want to shuffle towards the edge, feet flat on the floor. We've got almost that 90 degree angle here. We're gonna keep our back straight, nose over toes, hip hinge. We're gonna bring it all together, push through the hands, have the bum bump, and then lift right up to standing, and then put it into reverse, stick the bottom out, nose over toes again, reach with the hands. Once you've got the chair, then you're gonna slowly lower yourself back down. Simple as that. So again, shuffle to the edge, hands on the chair. We're gonna come forward, bump and lift using the hands and then put it into reverse, stick the bottom out, nose over toes. We're not gonna fall forwards because the bottom is heavier than the head, okay? So your bottom's like your counterweight, it brings you back down and then you put your hands down to support. I'm gonna show you right through without talking so much because I know I do waffle on sometimes. So forward and up. reaching back with the hands, and then back down. Now look how slowly I came back down, okay? I want you to do that when you practice at home. So you're gonna come forward and up nice and quickly, use your momentum, nose over toes, stick the bottom out. You're not gonna fall forward because your bottom is heavier than your head. Remember, so you are safe to do this. As long as you're sticking your bottom out behind you, you aren't gonna topple forward. This is heavier than that, I promise. So that means that when you're coming down, you just have to slowly control the movement and that's why your hands are there to help you do that. So if you've mastered that and you can do it with your hands, the final step and all there is to try now is to do it with no hands at all. And again, this might take several weeks to work up to, but practicing this is key, especially if you're over 70, it is one of the cornerstones of your independence. 
So this is a fantastic thing to practice for just about everyone. You're gonna shuffle right to the edge of your chair. This time hands are away. We're gonna to need to use more of our momentum now because we haven't got the hands. So we come forward and up like this. And then at the top, you're gonna to stick your bottom out. Remember now my center of gravity is back. My nose is over my toes dropping that bottom down nice and slow, and then come to rest. Again, use the momentum forward and up, pushing with the knees, and then down, push the hips out behind you, keep your back straight, slowly lower down, and come to rest. And again, forward and up, and then slowly back down, push the bottom out behind you, drop down, lower with the knees, and then come to rest. Simple as that. If you can do the sit to stand, I usually recommend people practice five in a row, several times a day. It's a great thing to practice no matter your ability level. And hopefully that's helped you get in and out of a chair. So that's how to easily get out of a chair if you're over the age of 70. I hope you found this video really useful. If you have, please do drop a comment below because I love to read your thoughts and it does help me to improve future videos. So thank you if you do that. And if you want to get more from me, there's loads more tips and tricks and strategies like this video in my book. It's called Thriving Beyond 50 and you can find it on Amazon using the link below. Thank you very much if you pick up a copy. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time and I'll speak to you on the next video.